Hi, Nick Perdomo from Perdomo Cigars. I got to tell you, I'm excited today. It's the first time I actually interview someone, and I get to interview my son, Nicholas. So welcome, Nicholas. How you doing? Thanks for having me, Dad. I'm doing well. My pleasure. Nicholas, I just want to ask you some questions. I think the audience will get a kick out of it, being in the cigar industry pretty much all your life. My first question was, is what was your first memory of cigars? Well, my first memory of cigars was watching uh, you and or my great-grandfather, Silvio Perdomo, uh, at our house in Miami Lakes. I don't know if you remember the old concrete bench we had in the back corner of the oh, backyard. I sure do. I remember you guys looking at the cigars, you know, having a nice conversation, just interacting, and it was a real special memory. It sure was, man. I remember that. And another question I want to ask you, what was your first memory about, about being around in the business? Well, my first memory was uh, being at our facility on West Flagler Street, which is South Miami. I remember running in the rolling, running around the factory, going to the rolling rooms. I remember sitting on the rollers' laps and just being mes memor mesmerized by the uh, by the by the roller rolling the cigars and passing the wrapper over top of the cigars. And I also remember going to Ebor City at our old facility, and I remember you going through a bale of tobacco and pulling out a, a leaf, tobacco leaf, and I remember you taking the lit cigar pressing it against the tobacco leaf to see if it was combustible, to see if it was properly fermented. And I just remember watching that ring just expand. It didn't, it didn't smear. It was perfect. It was like a perfect circle. So I just remember that was pretty cool. Yeah, I remember I taught you, know, the, the tobacco was streaked. When you put on, when you put the heat to the wrapper, it would mean that the tobacco wasn't fermented enough. Right. You had to have that clear circle. So I know you know that real well now, but I remember, God, you were maybe three or four years old back in the time. And when did you know that you wanted to be part of the family business? Well, Dad, I remember watching you and Grandpa work together. You guys just had such a great chemistry, and you guys really worked well together. And I always wanted to work with you, Dad. I always wanted that desk that you and Grandpa had in Nicaragua. So I always wanted to sit next to you, and you, know, you really worked hard building this company, and I just wanted to be a part of it. Well, thank you. That was great. I used to have this desk, and I would sit literally next to my dad. It was this long desk. It was probably about eight foot wide and those are great memories and you remember that pretty vividly. And what were some of your experiences that you learned about tobacco in Nicaragua, Nicholas? Well, I mean, outside of you teaching me, I remember, you know, you put me together with Aristides Garcia and Sarah Gonzalez. So Aristides Garcia is our the head of our pre-industry, which basically he oversees sorting and selecting of tobaccos and then fermentation. And Aristides taught me a lot of really important things, especially with fermentation. Uh, you know, using your hands, using your hands to feel the tobacco as it goes through the stages of fermentation, feeling the tobacco become more pliable. Your eyes, looking at the colors, the, how the colors evolve and how the colors, they caramelize, they get darker. And then also using your, your nose, you know, smelling the tobacco, uh, especially Connecticut wrappers. You know, over time they have this sweet, like honey wheat bread smell. And uh, he really, he taught me about how to turn pilones. So, so pilones are basically piles of tobacco. And so he taught me it's kind of like barbecue. You, you ferment the tobacco low and slow, and the tobacco is always going to tell you when it's ready. And then lastly, Sarah Gonzalez, who's like another grandmother to me. She's been with us since our inception. Uh, Sarah's the, our production, uh, she oversees our production. She's our factory manager. And Sarah taught me how to properly construct the cigar. So, you know. Dad, you know how to properly make a bunch, how you take the, the binder tobacco, you, then you take Seiko, you take Viso, so Seiko's lighter tobaccos, Viso's more of your medium type of tobaccos, and putting that Ligero rock solid in the center to make sure that tobacco, that cigar burns perfectly. And I remember, you know, molds have 10 slots, so she made me make some cigars, and you know, she's tough, so she, she, uh, tough. she really checked those cigars perfectly, you know, to make sure they were perfect, and. Lastly, she taught me how to pass the wrapper over top of that bunch and uh, really how to get that important stretch where not only the cigar looks beautiful, but when you get that stretch and it's tight over top of that bunch, it's going to burn perfectly because that wrapper's over top of the binder and it's just going to it's going to burn, burn in the perfect cylinder. So I'm blessed. I was really taught by some of the best. And these were taskmasters. I mean, you look at Aristides, he's 90 years old. He's been in the cigar industry for 77 years. Sarah's been in the industry. She worked with my dad in Cuba. She's been in the industry since 1968. I was three years old at the time. And what a blessing that you got to learn from these masters, not including spending 12 summers with my father, your grandfather. Absolutely. So I'm proud of you, Nicholas. You really, you really took on to it. It was something you really blazed your own trail. 
Um, another question is, how important is it for you to work with family? I mean, extremely important. Family's everything to me. Uh, you know, you guys, you and mom were so the best parents I could ever ask for. And, uh, you know, I just always wanted to, I felt like I, in a way I had to pay back my family for being so good to me. And, you know, family's everything to me. So it's, it's a no-brainer. It's extremely important, Dad. Well, I appreciate it. Uh, you know, there was an old biblical saying that said, spare the rod, spoil the child. And we were tough on you, Nicholas, but it was because we love you and we love your your sister, Natalie. And that's how you became good kids, because we were tough on you. It's really tough love. And Nicholas, if you wouldn't mind, could you tell, can you tell the audience how you started with the company? Sure. So when I began school at the University of Miami, I remember uh, back in 2013, Arthur took me under his wing. And uh, Arthur taught me how to make sales calls how to uh, how to call our customers and I remember going into school I would come into the morning the morning time to the afternoon making sales calls and then in the afternoon to the evening I would take evening classes but you know I remember I would always take an order pad with me to class and most of our customers you guys have my my phone number so you, periodically you would call me and I would be in class and I would take the orders and uh, I'd write it I'd step out of the classroom I'd write the order and then I would go back to class, and then the next morning I'd process that order. So that was quite frequent. I remember retailers telling me that they would call you for orders, and you would you would be actually in class. So uh, that's good. You had some great work ethic, and you still do. And you got to pay the tuition, right? Yeah, that's the truth. <laughs> so Nicholas, for the audience, what is your role with the company today? Today I'm national director of sales for Perdomo Cigars. So I work with our salesmen who are out in the road. So we work daily together by phone, by Zoom, and basically what we do is we strategize on sales, we strategize on how to properly merchandise, and then I work with each salesman uh, pretty much once a year with each individual salesman on the road. And uh, Dad, you know, the whole thing is is giving our customers, our retail partners, uh, the best service we possibly can. At the end of the day, you guys are our partners. That's plain and simple. No, no doubt. Nicholas is really a road warrior. You can imagine we have 15 salesmen. So he's out with every single salesman monthly and sometimes bi-monthly because there's only 12 months in the calendar year. So uh, you're like a chip off the old block, man. You remind me of me when, when I started, but uh, that's fantastic, and we really appreciate your work ethic. Um, one of the questions that I thought was really good is what are some of your hobbies? Well, I love to barbecue. I enjoy taking ingredients. I enjoy putting something really special together. It's kind of similar to making a blend of cigars. You know, you take different materials from different regions, different tobaccos from different regions, and then you try to make as many great blends as you possibly can. So uh, I also, I'm a big drummer, just like my dad. Uh, I enjoy playing on the weekends, and I enjoy, actually, I enjoy going out with my family. I love being with you guys. I love taking my wife out and uh, going to dinner and going to the mall. So, and also I love enjoying cigars, so that's a hobby. Well, it's great because we are a tight family. We normally get together between three and four times a week, so I definitely find that a blessing. Another question is, what motivates you on a daily basis at work? Well, for me, it's family, you know, and you and mom, even my wife, when I wake up in the mornings now, I'm a married man almost three years, and, uh, you know, waking up and seeing my wife, I have to get to work, you know, and, uh, you know, just thinking about, our customers, our retailers. Without you guys, we wouldn't be here. Uh, our salesmen, our, our employees in Nicaragua, the guys who really put the food on our table. So I, I have a lot to be motivated about, so. No, I agree with you 100%. Uh, it, it's nice how we work so cohesively, and, and that's an important thing, especially when you work with family. And Nicholas, how do you see the future with Perdomo Cigars? I'm really excited. You know, Dad, you, over the years, with the way we've been growing tobacco, our inventories are unbelievable. I really believe we have the best inventories of well-aged tobaccos in the industry, and we're, we're going to be making these great blends that we have today for many, many years. And uh, I'm just so excited. I mean, I think we're we're on top we're on top of everything, and we're just you know it's it's because of you. It's because of your hard work, and it's my job to do the best I can to continue to succeed, and and all of us. So I'm excited. The best is yet to come. Well, thank you, son. In reality, our greatest asset is our workforce. It's certainly, certainly not me, but I appreciate it. And then one last thing, I want to throw you a curveball. When are you going to give me some grandchildren? <laughs> to be continued. 
Well, hopefully we'll, we'll get some grandchildren here pretty soon. Janine and I are really waiting for it. So, guys, thank you for watching our YouTube video. And if you like, if you like this video, if you could do us both a favor, if you could hit your like, share, and subscribe button, I would appreciate it. We'll continue having more information on premium cigars and Perdomo cigars in general. So thank you so much, and thank you, Nicholas. Thanks for having me, Dad. Appreciate it. Thank you.